In this video, we're going to talk about workplace psychological health and safety. What does that mean? Does it change the way we deal with employee performance issues? And what can HR do to contribute to a psychologically healthy workplace? That's coming up right now. Hi there, I'm Andrea Adams and the host of HR Shop Talk. It's a show where you get some expert insight into HR. I encourage you to subscribe to the show by clicking on the button at the bottom of the screen so you can continue to learn from my smart and experienced guests. Today, my guest is Michelle Fanouf. Michelle is an expert in was resolving workplace concerns. She supports organizations and employees in her varying roles of psychological health and safety advisor, mediator, coach, ombudsperson, and workplace restoration practitioner. Hi, Michelle. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. And I'm looking forward to this discussion. So to kick it off, can you just talk about what is workplace psychological health and safety? Yes. I, I like to think that a workplace that psychologically health and safety is a place for workers to be successful, productive, engaged, it's a place where they're not exposed to psychological harm and a workplace that promotes their well-being. So this does seem to be an evolving aspect of workplace safety. Can you discuss some of that evolution we've seen in the last few years? Yeah, I, I think in different places across Canada, they've come to that differently. In Alberta here, we've had a change to our own occupational health and safety guidelines that include now include psychological health and safety. And that was, I think, 2018. Um, different provinces kind of have looked at this at different times, Ontario being, you know, a little bit farther ahead of us. And now, you know, the government of Canada with their Bill C-65, which is really focused on federally regulated organizations and really focusing on the bullying and harassment piece. I think the language they use is harassment and violence, but how do we ensure our workplaces are safe? And not just maybe in that aspect, but in the larger aspect of, of psychological safety. So question here, is creating an environment that's psychologically healthy and safe, is that expensive? Well, I think it's, you know, what every organization wants, right? They want a work environment where people can feel engaged and be the best employee they can. Of course, there's a cost to that, but I think the cost of doing nothing or the cost of not having that is much greater. The benefit of having this will, will reap financial rewards for that organization versus the cost of conflict or the cost of poor psychological health. And there's lots of business cases out there that have been done focusing on, on this. I think a lot of skeptics and cynics would say something like, well, now I have to tiptoe around my employees because I don't want to hurt their feelings. You know, what is your take on that? Yeah, I, I think psychological health isn't necessarily about hurting someone's feelings. It's about how do we create a space where they they can be successful. It's about how can we all work together well, uh, be engaged, have clear leadership and expectation. How can we be involved in visions? It's a big picture lens, right? Okay, so so let's just talk about the factors then. What are the factors of psychological health and safety? There's, there's 13. So I've mentioned a few organizational culture being you know one of the big ones what's our culture can we feel that there's trust here with this organization are we creating a culture like i said where everyone feels they can succeed clear leadership and expectations psychological and social support do employees have the support that, that they need even on that well-being side or that social side often that comes through employee assistance programs and those pieces um, growth and development. Can I grow and develop my skills here as an employee? Recognition and reward, involvement in decision making. Will I have involvement in decisions that affect me and, and the work that I do? Workload management. Is you know, my workload manageable? Engagement, right? Do I feel engaged in the work that I do? Balance, again, is there that kind of balance between what I'm doing at work and my home life? And protection of physical safety too, which as we know, if we don't feel physically safe, 
not going to feel psychologically safe, but you know, that psychological protection too. So do, do I feel I have a space where I can bring forward concerns and voice issues? Mm -hmm. That's quite a list. And it sounds like the kind of stuff that is typically in employee satisfaction surveys. In fact, the, the Gallup survey, I think they have 12 or 13 questions. They pretty much follow the majority of these. I did forget one, civility and respect. And what twigged me was that is not tied to the Gallup survey. That's a question they don't really address like specifically, but that that is one of the factors. If you found this interesting, subscribe to see all the episodes and comment. Have you seen a psychologically unwell work environment and what was done about it? Let us know in the comment section below. So back to you, Michelle, how do employers go about creating a psychologically safe workplace and what are the consequences if they don't? Okay, well, let me start with the first piece. So there's so many resources on the web right now. It's kind of like information overload. I think the starting point is the national standard for psychological health and safety that was developed in 2013 and it was developed in Canada. And also there's a guide to implement the standards because it is you know, when you look at these 13 pieces, really, it's it's a lot. The implementation guide, and there's nine practices that employers can kind of focus on, that they've done some case studies where it's been the biggest impact. The you, sorry, Andrea, you had a second part to that question. Kind of the consequences. Yeah, what's the consequences if they don't? And I think we talked about that earlier around the cost, right? The cost to the organization the cost in investigations, in um, health cost, disability cost, um, turnover. It can be very substantial. Okay, so employers often supported by HR must manage the performance of their employees and, and, and the, in particular, those employees who are underperforming. Does psychological health and safety at work change how employers should approach this? And if so, how? I, I don't know if it changes how employers approach it, but I think they need to look at performance issues and, and determine, you know, if it's a behavior that they're seeing, what's behind that behavior, what's creating that for this person. You know, in my experience working with employees, no one's coming into the workplace to say, I'm going to come and do a horrible job today and I'm going to be miserable and I'm going to lash out at everyone, right? Like there's something that's off for that person and, and maybe it is something personal at home, but maybe often it's something in the workplace. And so I think managers just have to take some time and try to determine that. And if it's, you know, a lack of skills, a lack of fit for this role, there has to be some exploration around that. You know, you don't go straight to performance improvement plans. Uh, you really have to take time to figure out how you can support that employee. And they have a role in that too, right? There's some balance that needs to happen there. Okay, so can you talk a little bit about the employee's responsibility in creating a psychologically healthy and safe workplace? Yeah, the, that is around, like what comes to mind for me is engagement, right? Like how can I be engaged in this workplace? There's some barriers for that person that are maybe outside their control or outside their authority. Then reach out to the, the proper person or the proper place in this organization, you know, whether that's union, EAP, or the Safe Disclosure Office, Respectful Workplace Office. Many organizations have a system in place. We refer to it often as conflict management system, but there's lots of resources in many organizations for employees to reach out to to help them sort through some of these pieces. You know, I think it's a familiar experience for all of us where we're upset about, but it could be anything, and then we misdirect it at, at a, someone or something that's powerful in our lives, and sometimes that might be in the, the employer. So you'll have an employee blaming the employer for things that really are not the employer's fault. Yeah, and maybe it's not about looking at the employer, but what I'm thinking of, Andrea, is my role as ombudsperson. So it's, I'm this independent, neutral person that employees can reach out to confidentially, anonymously, sort through some of this, right? This reminds me of lots of calls that I get that say, oh, like my leader, he's such a da-da-da, and I can't do this, and I can't do that, and 
and I can't get anywhere in this organization. And it's an opportunity for me to do some coaching to say, okay, well, what have you done? You know, what, what do you feel these barriers are? What behaviors are you bringing into the workplace? How might those be seen? What might you have to change? Right? So it's, it's really an opportunity to get a different perspective or to help build a different perspective and look at, at what you might be bringing into this workplace. And, you know, lots of people can do that through HR. You know, if you're feeling kind of stuck, then it is time to get some support and and look at these different parts of what you might be creating. You know, what's that balance? For sure. If only it were so easy to always blame somebody else. (laughs) Okay. You've already talked about this a little bit, but maybe you can summarize. So if someone wants to know more about creating a psychologically health and safe workplace, where can they go? The, The national standard. Okay, so I'll add a link to that. Yeah, so certainly the Mental Health Commission of Canada has a lot of information on on their website and a lot of links, and I can share some links with you. Workplace strategies for mental health and also looking at building the business case. And I can share some links because Deloitte also did a business case or like a sample business case that'd be very helpful. Okay, well, that's great. That is a great place for people to start. So psychological health and safety is an aspect of HR that is evolving relatively quickly. If you have a workplace that is impacted by conflict, I also talked to Michelle about workplace restoration. A link to that video is at the end. Thanks for watching and see you next time.